Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about your first 10 sheep breeds and I will warn you that even for me, sheep are really hard to tell apart sometimes so I'm going to try to point out some characteristics that you can use to tell these guys from each other. So the first sheep that we're going to look at is the Barbados Black Belly and these guys are hair sheep. Um, they were developed on Barbados from an African hair sheep and a European wool sheep and introduced into the U.S. in the early 1900s. They used to be a lot more common in the U.S., but now they're fairly rare. They are adaptable to a wide range of environments. Since they were um, bred in the Caribbean, they can really um, withstand those hot temperatures, but they will change their behavior to suit the situation. So if they are in a colder environment, they'll do fine too. They have a really high reproductive efficiency with an average of two lambs per litter and a lambing interval of between eight and nine months. Um, they are hair sheep, but they do have an undercoat that keeps them warm in the winter. And then of course that would shed in the spring. And they are usually either all tan or brown with black points and a black underline. So you can kind of see where those black points are on the head and going down the chest and at the edges of the legs. Um, males have this neck piece that extends down to their brisket area and that kind of looks like a lion's mane and the, the males also only have these horns which curl outwards from their heads in this corkscrew type pattern but the females don't have those. These guys are resistant to a lot of diseases and many parasites so they're easy keepers. They tend to have lower body fat and milder flavored meat so they are a meat sheep breeze for that purpose. Next on our list is the Cheviot. These guys were developed in the Cheviot Hills of England and Scotland in the 1300s and introduced into the U.S. in the 1830s. They are known for their upright ears, um, and that is really kind of the key feature that you're going to use to try to tell these guys apart. So most sheep are not going to have these ears that point straight up like that. They also have black hooves, which makes them more resistant to getting lame. Um, they have black skin in the muzzle area, so you can see that it looks kind of grayish under that white wool. And they do not have any wool on their face or on their legs at all. And that's another way that you're going to help tell them apart. Uh, they are a long wool breed, so they have a longer staple length and they have a distinctive helical crimp, so it spirals away from their body. And that gives it exceptional durability and resilience. Um, and they are also bred to be really self-sufficient. So these guys can pretty much stay out in the pasture most of the time. They don't need a lot of management. They're resistant to worms and they also are known for having easy lambings, so they won't need a lot of assistance with that. Number 44 is the Columbia. And Columbia sheep were actually the first sheep breed that was developed in the U.S. The USDA actually bred them in Wyoming and Idaho, and they did that by crossing Lincoln and Rambouillet um, sheep so that they could get a sheep that was really ideal for the Western rangelands. So these guys have wool all the way down to their fetlock area of their leg, and that's going to be one of the key characteristics that helps us tell them apart from some of these other ones. They have a wool cap on their head, so you can see it looks kind of like a little hat, but they do have a bare face underneath that. They will never have horns, and that's going to be another key characteristic, and their ears point outwards from their face. These guys are also one of the largest breeds, so looking at them next to another sheep, they're going to be noticeably larger. They are dual purpose, but they are mainly raised for medium length wool, and they're very hardy and adaptable, nice all-round sheep. Dorpers are another type of hair sheep, as you can see from their shedding here. This is a South African breed, traditionally raised for mutton, and they were developed back in the 1930s. They usually have these black heads, but they can be all of a white or tan color as well. Um, because they're hair sheep, they're well adapted to live in a lot of different environments, um, different climates and breeding conditions, and they will grow that tougher undercoat when they need it to stay warm, and then they will shed it when it's hot. They have an extra long breeding season compared to most sheep, so that allows them to lamb at pretty much any time of year, and they have really rapid growth. So those are both perfect characteristics for a meat herd. Their thick skin is actually the number one choice worldwide for sheepskin products as well. So when they're harvested for meat, 20% of their carcass value will actually come from that sheepskin. 
46 is the Dorset. This is an ancient variety that was bred in Dorset, England. It's probably a cross between Merino and Wales horn sheep that were produced during the time that Spain was trying to conquer England because those sheep, Merino sheep came from Spain. Um, so this is the number one white face breed in the United States and the second most popular sheep overall worldwide. They are triple purpose, so they're really good milkers, but they also have high quality carcasses and they're very white in their fiber with very strong close fibered fleece, which gives them a high yield. Um, one of the ways that you're going to tell them apart is that there is no wool below their knees. So they do have it up to the hock in the back and up to the knee in the front. Columbia's do tend to look similar to these, but remember that they had wool all the way down to the fetlock where the dorsets are not going to have that. They can either be horned or pulled, and the horns are actually a recessive trait. They have a bare face and a darker color on their knees, um, and their ears also point outwards from their face. They will breed out of season, which is not common in wool sheep and they do well in both pasture and confinement um, systems. 47 is the Hampshire. These were bred in Hampshire, England in the 1880s. They are black-skinned, white-wooled sheep, and they do have some wool below the knee and the hock, um, but it's much more likely to be below the hock on the back leg. You see that the knees tend to be a little bit more bare. Their wool cap is going to be what sets them apart from other black-faced breeds. So if you look at where the wool cap goes, it's not just that little hat on the end of their head, it also extends down and covers their cheeks. Um, and these guys have a bare muzzle and eye area only. So the wool otherwise mostly covers their face. Their ears also point outwards, they are always pulled, and they're known for their feed conversion. They have a genetic ability to more efficiently convert forage into meat and fiber. So these guys are also known as oxen of the sheep world. They have really strong muscling and big blocky square shaped bodies. Um, and that helps because they are primarily a meat breed. These guys are also very large. The ewes range around 200 pounds and the rams around 300 pounds full grown, which is up about 100 pounds more than most sheep. Um, and the wool is really hard wearing, and because of that, it's often blended with other wools to improve the durability. It can also be used to make a really fine grade of felt. 48 is the Caracal, and this is probably the oldest breed of domesticated sheep still alive today. There is evidence that base, dates them back to 1400 BC in Babylon, and that's from the carvings of them on Babylonian temples, and they've also found lambskin in archaeological digs. These are now native to Central Asia. They live in high altitude areas with scant desert vegetation and a limited water supply, so they're very adaptable because they can get by on almost nothing. One of the reasons that they're able to do that is they have this really flat, broad tail that you can see in a couple of these pictures here. And that allows them to store nutrients and store water, so it actually acts a lot like a camel's hump, or like the hump we were talking about in the Brahmin cattle. These guys are always born a black color, and as they age, they develop different color coats. They have long, narrow heads that kind of curve downwards, and their ears also point downwards. They are known as fur sheep. So these are traditionally harvested for those skin on pelts for sheepskin. And they have this long wavy fleece. It's very lightweight. It has strong fibers and a low grease content, which makes it easy to process. They're used a lot for carpets, saddle blankets, and wall hangings. And they have, their wool has an excellent felting ability. And it was actually the first wool to probably ever be used for felt. 49 is the Katahdin, and these guys should look familiar because this is what we raise on campus. It is a hair sheep, which is wonderful because you don't have to shear it, and it can live in just about any environment. They come in these white, tan, and brown colors, and they are bred for to be a meat sheep that you don't need to shear. They actually came out of Maine in the 1950s, and they were named after Mount Katahdin, which is one of the mountains up there. They're really hardy and adaptable and low-maintenance sheep, they are parasite resistant and they have a two layered coat of coarse outer hairs and in, with an undercoat of woolly fibers. 
and that, of course, they shed throughout the year. These guys are often used to manage vegetation by grazing so that mowing is not necessary. And since they are one of the lowest maintenance sheep, they're a perfect choice for facilities like ours when you have students involved. Number 50 is the Lester long wool. So even though these are Lester long wools, they're also known as luster long wools because their wool is said to have such a brilliance that they appear to shine or glisten for a few days after they're sheared um, when it's all nice and clean and shorn. Um, they came out of England in the mid 1700s and they're a very important breed. They are the first to be purposely selectively bred for certain traits that are now in the bloodline of pretty much all long wool breeds. Uh, they're eager grazers, um, so there's a saying that when they drive merinos and lesters down the roadsides in Australia, all the merinos have their heads up, they're watching what's going on, the lesser longwools are all busy with their heads down chomping along on the grass. They're really docile, they're really easy to handle, but they don't respond well to herding dogs. They are much more likely to kind of back into the barn and fend off the dog, and they really don't listen to the dog and what they're trying to do. So in that case, that docile temperament doesn't really work for you. Um, then our last one for this week is the Lincoln. This is another long wool dual purpose sheep. It's very closely related to the Lester long wool and it was developed especially for producing the heaviest, longest, and most lustrous fleece of any breed in the world. Um, they have the longest staple length of all breeds and they are also the largest breed by body weight of all of our sheep breeds. So these guys really highly sought after by spinners and weavers because you have that long fiber that's much easier to make into a thread. All right, so that wraps up this week's breeds and we will see you again in another week or so for your second set.